All right. Um, this is Pre-Calculus 30 with myself, uh, Mr. Cumming, Aberdeen School. Um, things that you'll need to do. You need to make sure that you have your textbook with you at all times because all the questions we'll be going over um, should be from there. Uh, you need a calculator. If you have a graphing calculator, that works as well. Uh, but if you don't, no big deal. And if you can, bringing a laptop or some other device to class will work great. Um, we will have opportunity to use these because we need to get on the internet quite often. So let's get started. Our first unit is uh, function transformations. Very fancy. Um, and our first topic is horizontal and vertical translations. In your textbook, that is page 6 to 15. Um, we'll be going through each of the curriculum outcomes for each lesson. This one is part of uh, 30.7. To extend understanding of transformations to include functions given in equation or graph form, which we'll do today in general, including horizontal and vertical translations, such as the title, and horizontal and vertical stretches, which we'll take up tomorrow. Um, what we're going to try and get done today, our lesson objectives, I want you to be able to perform a horizontal and or a vertical translation on a given function. Um, if you're given two functions, I want you to be able to state what sort of translations were performed upon it. And you're going to try and apply horizontal and vertical translations to some real life situations. And that'll come in uh, the class portion of the lesson. All right, so first off, functions. Yes, we're gonna be talking about functions a lot. This entire course is about functions. Um, you're gonna to have to live with it. So what we're talking about when we're talking about translations is that a uh, function is going to be changed. It's going to be changed from a normal function. So what you need to be able to do is know what a normal function looks like. And we'll do an example here right away to show you what that's all about. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a normal uh, quadratic function, just x squared, plain old x squared. Hopefully in your head you have a, an idea of what that looks like right now. And in order to do that, we're going to look at a program called GeoGebra. Now, GeoGebra is a program that is free, downloadable off the internet, and uh, is quite useful. So we'll just move to that program right now. So I've called up GeoGebra. Um, right now, you can see we have the X and the Y axis on here, but what would be a little bit of more help is to get the actual grid on there. So I just went up to view and turned on the grid. So like all or most graphing software, um, we need to be able to put our function in somewhere. And that is down here at the bottom left hand side. And uh, in most of the software that we use, um, we don't have to put the equal sign, we just need to put in the function. So we're just gonna graph plain old x squared. So we use x and then we use the symbol for exponent and squared, hit return and ta-da, we've got ourselves f of x equals x squared. And it disappeared and now it's back. Okay. Um, so it's a graph that you're familiar with. Now we're gonna see what happens if we start to change this a little bit. So we're gonna take our x squared and we're just gonna add a constant to it. We're gonna see what happens. So the constant I'm gonna add to it right now is two. So I'm putting in x squared plus two. If you remember from our lessons last year, maybe you have an idea what's gonna happen. And it looks like our new graph, which is f of x squared, uh, sorry, just x squared plus two, um, has risen two full units. So we can double check by inserting some points here. Point A has a coordinates of zero, zero. Point B up here has coordinates of 0 comma 2. Well this point here, point C we'll call it, it has coordinates that are 1 and 1 and if I move up two full units I find another point which is point D. Likewise this goes on for quite a while if we scroll up a bit, we'll zoom out a bit here, um, if we take another point right here, point F. It has coordinates of two comma four, and right above it on our new graph is two units above is point G. So I guess the conclusion is that when we take a function, which is X squared, 
and we just add a constant to it, the entire graph shifts upwards. We added a two, the entire graph shifted upwards, two units. So I guess we should see what happens then if we subtract. I'm sure you have ideas already. So if we subtract, so we put in another function here, we're gonna call this x squared minus three, we'll say. And there's our new graph. X squared minus three is below, and it is three units below in every, every way. So we call that a vertical translation or sometimes called a vertical shift. If you add a number to your function, the graph is shifted upwards. If you subtract a number to your function, the graph is shifted downwards. Now, these are things that we talked about last year. I don't know if we use the terminology translation, but that's where we're at. Okay, let's try and clear this off or we'll just have a new one. So let's try and make a horizontal translation. Horizontal means that the, the graph is gonna move left to right. So again, we're gonna start with our original function, which is x squared. Um, if we introduce some brackets, and we put in say x minus three, and then we square that, our new graph appears to have been shifted over three units to the right. We can zoom in here. Um, original vertex of this graph was at zero, zero. New vertex is at three comma zero. So when we put in the x minus three squared, we've shifted it over to the right three units. Now notice that uh, this graph or this equation, sorry, is x minus three and it moves to the right three units. Well, that means that if we put in some brackets and we go x plus two, that means our new parabola, our new quadratic should be moving to the left two units. So let's see. And there it is. We put in an x plus two in the brackets and our new function is moved to the left two full units. So this is a horizontal shift or horizontal translation. If we throw a negative in with the x, so it always has to be applied to the x. So if there's square root or if there's a squared, like in this quadratic function that we've talked about, it would have to be in with the x. And so if it's a negative number, it moves to the right. And if it's a positive number, it moves to the left. So that's two of the main topics that we are talking about today. So let's head back to the presentation. So we've used our functions. We know that it's a change from a normal function. We need to know what a normal function looks like. In this case, we used x squared, and that's a parabola, and we used GeoGebra to do all that. Excellent. So here's an, uh, a little lesson for you, or an example, I guess. What we're doing is we have our, our original function. It's y equals f of x. That's the blue function. Our red function, um, we need to know what its new equation will be. Now, it's not going to have uh, an equation like x squared. It's made of a number of segments as opposed to um, an actual smooth curve. But we can find out what translations are being applied. And then we can write the appropriate function. So we can see that uh, the point B and the point E are co in corresponding positions. So the point B has moved down four full units in order to become point E. So that means we've had a vertical translation of negative four. So that means our function, we could write our new function as f of x minus four. Um, that point B to point E has also been shifted over to the right three units. So that means we can call that f of x minus three because it's moved over to the right three units. And then we can also subtract four from that. So we can take a look at two functions. You can find the equation of one function from another, um, as long as you can sort of take a look at the really important points, um, reference points, if you will, and see 
if they moved all the same amount. So point B and point E have moved the same, point A and point F, point C and point G, and point D and point H. So that means this red graph is just a translation, two translations from the blue graph. Okay, in summary, we say that a function undergoes a translation if it's shifted either vertically or horizontally, that just means it moves, either left or right or up or down. We use the letter k to represent a vertical translation, and the function that undergoes a vertical translation has a new equation of y equals f of x plus k if it's moved up, or y equals f of x minus k if it's moved down. The letter h denotes a horizontal translation, and a function that undergoes a horizontal translation has a new equation of y equals f of x minus h when it's moved to the right, or y equals f of x plus h when it's moved to the left. So practice questions can be found on page 12 to 15. You don't have to do a certain amount of questions. I don't have to do any specific questions. Just know that we will take um, the rest of the class time to work on these. So if you try a few at home and you know what you're doing, perfect, we can try some of the harder ones as a group, or you can get a little one-on-one -on -one help from me. That's all I've got for you. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening and we'll see you in class tomorrow.